it is false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. Daily Wire host Michael Knowles gave a speech on March 6th over at CPAC. And that one statement, that one pretty gross, disgusting endorsement of eradicating transgender people did exactly what he was hoping it would do. It helped him with his show numbers, it led to a bunch of anger, people who are rightly upset that someone would call for that kind of violence against a group of people that is incredibly powerless and discriminated against in this country. And um, I would suspect, we don't know for sure, that a lot of the disgusting commentary that comes from people like him is due to the fact that they get rewarded for it. Michael Knowles was rewarded for what he said. And it came in the form of increased views on his show. And like, have you seen the guy? He's, I mean, I'd rather sit through a hundred hour long calculus class. But if he says something that's incredibly inflammatory, it'll get the attention. Now, uh, why else do we think that he might be a bad faith actor? Well, he had an interesting uh, experience in college. He wanted to make it in the entertainment industry. So he was part of the, I guess, theater club or whatever. And um, here is an example of one of the scenes he starred in. Let's watch. You okay, buddy? Gonna vom? No. You afraid to go inside? It's not that. I can leave. Thanks. I bet it was. Now that was from a short film called House of Shades, uh, released in 2015. If you guys want to check it out, I believe it's available on YouTube. But you know, it is. Look, he's acting there, right? It doesn't mean anything about his sexuality. But someone who thinks that members of the LGBTQ, uh, you know, community should be eradicated probably wouldn't want to star in a scene like that. No, it does mean something about his ideology, not his sexuality. You're right, and so. Um, I believe, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I actually watched it enough to uh, uh, get the plot line, okay? So he's like a, a kind of a smooth Don Juan character in this short movie. Terrible casting. Okay, I know, hilarious. And uh, that guy that he is making out with and then had sex with is a conservative student on campus that he seduces into gay sex. Mm. And he does it by plowing him full of alcohol. Like so, he gets him drunk so that he could take, and then he brags about taking his virginity. Mm. Okay, so now, if you're actually opposed to the LGBTQ community, would you star in a movie where you took a conservative student's virginity in a gay sex scene? Probably not, right? But these days, there's a lot of money in hating the LGBTQ community. That's right. That's right. So he couldn't make it as an actor. And he couldn't make good money doing that. So he's like, "Oh, I got an idea. I'll make good money just attacking these people because there's a market for it. Every once in a while, conservative hosts will say the quiet part out loud. And that was certainly the case in the next video we're going to show you. So you have you know, male hosts from the Daily Wire playing Mario Kart together, and then Ben Shapiro gives the whole game away. Watch. I'm gonna be the next PewDiePie. I'm gonna make my millions on this game. That'd be the first time you've been productive. So. <laughs> uh, the first if we could somehow monetize you yeah, as a video game player, I would make that deal. Hey, hip guys. Hey, hip A. Hey, watch them make a deontological reference about Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. That's a winner. I mean, honestly, it's not that hard a job, Michael. All you really have to do is what Matt and I do. You just say that a man is not a woman. You just, go to I, just keep saying it over and over. Me. Just, uh, it's not that hard. Just keep saying a man is not a woman, keep saying it over and over. And look, the proof is in the pudding. So why don't we take a quick look, Jenk, at what happened both in the headlines and in the analytics for Knowles' show 
following his statements over at that CPAC speech. So uh, as you can see, plenty of headlines here. Salon covered it, CPAC speaker says transgenderism must be eradicated. Huffington Post wrote about it. Uh, other outlets wrote about it as well. So it generates headlines, which generates attention toward his show. Now let's look at Michael Knowles's popularity both before and after the comments. So this graph shows you Google searches um, of the phrase Michael Knowles over the past 90 days. Okay, so as you can see, March 6th was when he made the statements and then you see this giant spike uh, in his analytics. Let's go to the next one. This is specifically for YouTube. While the spike is a little smaller, it's still a pretty significant spike. And if you're wondering, what does the 83 number mean there? Well, um, 83 essentially means uh, it's 83 out of 100. And 100 means that something is incredibly popular, right? So the 100 in the first graph and the 85 in the second graph refer to the search terms relative popularity compared to all other searches. 100 is the highest score you can get on the graph, meaning that Michael Knowles was one of, if not the most popular search term on the day he made his CPAC comments. Okay, so I tell you all that because, and this is a genuine question. I don't know what the right answer is to this. I am so sick of playing into their game. Yeah, there is no answer. So I love being constructive on the show, I talk about it all the time. This one's near impossible to solve. So first, on that tiny little video where they're playing the Mario Kart, it's the most true thing that conservative hosts have ever said in the history of America. So they just they they gave the game away right there in that little clip. All we do is we antagonize people and attack them, and they can't help but defend these poor people, and then we make tons of money. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. And you see it in those charts that we pulled up for you guys. YouTube is where they make the money. So the fact that he's spiking on YouTube, mm -hmm. 83 out of 100, and then the chart goes up, right? That's cold hard cash that they're making. That's right. And they know that. So now the problem is they're willing to say outrageous things, which is gonna cause a spike because people are gonna report, not only is it hateful, but it's also outrageous. How do you not report someone saying we should eradicate trans people in this country? I mean, that statement was so outrageous that a female employee over at the Daily Wire quit. She was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like calling for the eradication of any group is disgusting and I want nothing to do with it. So good on her. I mean, I probably wouldn't have wanted to work there in the first place, but you know, she took a stand and I commend her for that. So then it forces us on the left to defend trans folks because we don't leave anybody behind. Trans, gay, black, Muslim, Jewish, it doesn't matter. We're gonna defend, right? Because we're not gonna let them say, oh, we should just eradicate them and let that stand. So that then doubles their attention and doubles their money. And they know that game. But the left cannot play that game because we're decent human beings. So if we went around going, we should eradicate the right wing, eradicate them. It would be super outrageous, it would cause a spike. Number one, we know that, but we don't do it. Number two, if we did do it though, we would not get the same reaction as the right wing. The right wing, their fans go, yes, eradicate them, and they love it, right? For us, they'd be like, are you nuts? And our own audience would rightfully turn against us because no, we don't wanna exterminate people that are Republicans, that's insane, I right? just don't wanna say crap I don't believe. And bingo. For money, for money, I don't. That's why I work here, that's why I work here. I can't stand constantly chasing money and doing, by the way, like whoring yourself out in that way. Knowing the kind of damage it does to people who already have no power in this country is it's unbelievable to me that anyone would look. And then they talk about the masculinity crisis. I'm a woman, I love, I'm just gonna keep it real. Some members of the left might get upset, but it is who I am and I'm not gonna hide it. I love manly men, I just do, it's what I like. I look at that and I see weakness, I don't see a manly man. I see someone who's a coward who's willing to do anything for money. That doesn't turn me on, doesn't turn any any real person who has morals, ethics, integrity on at all. Lowering yourself like that, picking on powerless people just to make a buck, no. And look, a lot of these guys, it's, it was true of Andrew Breitbart, true of Ben Shapiro. And it could be, look, that you're trying to get by. I, I was an extra, I've told these hilarious stories. I used to write in TV. 
But I, I didn't like it. I, I never wanted to do that. I did it for money. Uh, I, but I always wanted to come back and start my own talk show. And that's what we did. And we suffered for a long, long time, making no money doing that, right? But these guys, they wanted to make it in Hollywood. I know. And that's, that's partly that's why they're so bitter at Hollywood and at liberals. So yeah, that's a great point. Um, man, a lot of them wanted to make it in the entertainment industry. So. Obviously, we showed you the video of uh, Michael Knowles. He was a theater kid. Uh, ben Shapiro wanted to be a screenwriter. Uh, Steven Crowder was a child actor. Things dried up clearly. And then, um, do I need to remind you about James O'Keefe? I think I do. I think I do. Oh, no. I just can't believe that my face is on TV. I'm Lee Kirky, and my left or right, and <laughs> Anna, you're going to accidentally make him famous. <laughs> Anyways, yes, all these guys wanted to be in theater. They wanted to be actors. They wanted to be screenwriters. They couldn't make it. And so now they're taking it out on a lot of that community. And Including it's really the most callous way to make money. It's disgusting. And you should understand that that's part of media, right? And these guys think, I'm going to target this audience that I know likes that kind of hate, and I'm going to monetize it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.